I always love this part. This is when I make my early predictions, and then later on I get to see how right or how wrong I was. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another edition of Raps Report, a podcast where I talk about the Raptors and the NBA. I'm your host, Luca Rosano. Hope you're all doing well, and I hope you all had yourselves a fantastic weekend. As you can tell from the title of this video in today's show, I'm going to be predicting the Eastern and Western Conference standings for the upcoming 2020-2021 NBA season. Try saying that three times fast as we are going to rank these teams one through eight. So, uh, I mean, we know what these teams are going to look like. The NBA offseason is coming to an end. It was another wild NBA offseason, wild NBA free agency period, and a lot of these teams are going to look different from a year ago. So this is when I come in and I make my early predictions, and then we'll see how I do six, six months later, six months from now. So bookmark this, do what you got to do, and we'll come back six months later, and then you'll say, Luca, you were spot on, or Luca, you got to find a new job because you were way off. So before we get into this, guys, please do me a solid favor. Please smash that like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you aren't new. Again, thank you so much. We recently hit 18K. We're officially on the road to 19K. And make sure you turn on those post notifications so you never miss another one of my shows. Follow me on social media if you haven't already. Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And of course, as always, leave your comments down below. And if you're up for it, join as a channel member as the season is a couple weeks away. Okay, we're going to first start with the Western Conference here. And we're going to start in reverse order. So I'm first going to start with the 8th seed, working my way up to the number 1 seed. Okay, let's begin. What do I see going down? In the Western Conference, which did get a whole lot better. And I mean, the West is deep. Number eight, the Phoenix Suns. Yes, I got the Suns making the playoffs this year, guys. You saw what this team was able to do in the bubble. They finished with a perfect record, just coming short of making it to the big dance. And they added and traded for Chris Paul. I think he's going to make all the difference in the world for this team. You look at Chris Paul. He instantly elevates the big men on his team. You go back to his days when he was a Hornet, how much a guy like David West benefited playing alongside Chris Paul. Then you go to his days with the Clippers, how much Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan benefited from playing with Chris Paul. What I'm getting at here is I think Chris Paul is going to absolutely elevate DeAndre Aiden's game. We could very well see a breakout season for Aiden. And then you add in Devin Booker, who was one of the best players in the bubble. This Suns team, they got a very good five. It's going to come down to their bench play. But I think the Suns team is going to surprise a lot of people. They are going to go toe-to-toe with some of the best in this conference. And I think they're going to have a good enough record to get in. So I got the Phoenix Suns, surprised or not, finishing eighth. All right, let's move now to the seventh seed in the West. I got the Golden State Warriors. Many people might say, Luca, this is way too low for the Warriors, but here's my argument, guys. If Stephen Curry once again gets injured, the entire Warriors season falls apart. He is the glue on that team. So if Steph Curry could stay healthy for the entire season, I could see the Warriors get up to as high as as fourth or third. But if he gets injured and once again has a shortened season, in an already shortened season. Um, It could be another very tough year for the Warriors. Of course, they are going to be without Klay Thompson. They got uh, Wiseman to look forward to, their draft pick. Wiggins is going to be expected to take that next step. Obviously, got Draymond Green still there. So again, if Curry can stay healthy, the Warriors are definitely a playoff team. But if he gets injured once again early into the season, it could be a disaster for the Golden State Warriors. So all that considered... There's still high uncertainty with this team. It's crazy because, I mean, just a few short years ago, we're talking about this team as as a dynasty as they were one. But I got the Warriors finishing seventh when it's all said and done. Okay, sixth, I got the Utah Jazz. I think the Jazz are going to take a little bit of a step back from a year ago. But nonetheless, they will still find themselves in the thick of things in the Western Conference. Okay, fifth, I got the Houston Rockets. Don't sleep on the Rockets. If John Wall 
can stay healthy. I know that's a big if, but he if he can be healthy, the Rockets, I think, will benefit more from a healthy John Wall than they did from a healthy Russell Westbrook. And I think Harden and Wall will flourish. I mean, the Rockets, I think, are going to surprise a lot of people, and they could be as high as a third-place team if all goes well. But I'm not going to give them too much of the benefit of the doubt. I'll just say this Rockets team will be status quo for the most part. And this will be a middle-of-the-pack team. So Harden, Wall, still got guys like Eric Gordon. The Rockets are still going to be in a lot of these games. And I don't think they're going to take a huge step back. They're going to be fifth. Okay, fourth. This might be surprising to a lot of people. I got the Los Angeles Clippers, who I believe... You know, they didn't really upgrade. If anything, you can make an argument that they downgraded, losing Harrell. Uh, they did get Abaka, who has proven to be a much better postseason performer than Harrell. So maybe that will end up being the move of the offseason if Abaka can once again come up big in a postseason run. But I think the Clippers are going to play it safe in the regular season. I think we're going to see a lot of load management. I think Kawhi Leonard's not going to play in a lot of these games, Paul George, and this team's going to kind of coast through the regular season. They're not going to care too much about the regular season. Of course, they're going to try to finish as high as they can, but I don't think the regular season matters to this team. I think this team thinks that they're good enough, no matter where they finish, to compete and contend in the Western Conference and get out of the Western Conference. Of course, they're disappointed that last year they had a a shortcoming in the second round, so I think this team's focus is going to come later on. They're going to coast through the regular season, and that is why I got the Clippers finishing fourth. Okay, third, I got the Dallas Mavericks. I think this team is going to make a massive leap, and I think we're going to see it this season. Luka Doncic, he's going to be in the conversation for MVP. Chris Stapps Porzingis is going to have himself a big year. I really love this Mavericks team, and we saw what they did in the first round of last year's playoffs against the Clippers. So this... Mavs team is one that you don't want to sleep on. This is going to be a top three team in the Western Conference. You heard it here. And this Mavs team is going to be considered a low-key championship contender in the grand scheme of things. I'm so excited to see how this team fares this season. And I'm so excited to see the continued progression of Luka Doncic. Because as good as he's been, I think he can be better, which is scary. So... Look out for the Mavs this season. I got them finishing third. Okay, second, I got the Denver Nuggets. This team put everybody on notice after they did what they did, coming back from 3-1 down against the Clippers, making it to the conference finals, and you know going toe-to-toe against a very good Lakers team. The Nuggets, they're built for the regular season. They got tremendous depth. Look for Jamal Murray to continue from where he last left off. I'm excited to see how he continues to elevate his game. Jokic. He's going to be in the conversation, possibly for an MVP award. The Nuggets are going to be the two seed in the West. And then finally, the number one seed, I got the Los Angeles Lakers. Nuff said, this is clearly the best team, not only in the West, but in all of basketball. They can afford LeBron James missing time because for how deep they are, you look at their starting lineup, their bench, it's incredible. You can play either unit and this team will win a lot of games. So the Los Angeles Lakers, they will be first and I'm pretty confident that uh, that will happen. All right, let's move on over now to the Eastern Conference. The number eight seed in the East, I got the Washington Wizards. The Wizards will make the playoffs. Russell Westbrook, I think, is going to have himself a huge season. We're going to see the OKC Thunder Russ here. He might even flirt with a triple-double average. Bradley Beal, can he stay healthy? That's a big if. If he does, this Wizards team is good enough with some of the other pieces they have there. Bertans, they of course re-signed him. That was big. This Wizards team is good enough to get into the playoffs. Seventh, Indiana Pacers. Pacers will still be a playoff team. I know there's a lot of uncertainty with Victor Oladipo as he enters the last year of his contract. A lot of people think the Pacers might even trade him, and who knows? They probably could. If the Pacers get off to a slow start, they might decide to trade Oladipo. I'll go with the notion that they don't. But I do think the Pacers will struggle out of the gate, and they will finish with the seventh seed. Okay, six. This could come to many as a surprise. I got the Philadelphia 76ers. I was reading a couple of articles before this, and a lot of people, some people, have the Sixers finishing as high as third or second. I'm still not sold on the Sixers team. I'm not a believer in Doc Rivers. This Sixers team collapsed last season. I don't have faith 
in Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, especially with the attitude issues that sometimes Embiid has. Could be wrong here, very wrong, but I'm going to say the Sixers have themselves another mediocre season and they will finish sixth. All right, number five, I got the Toronto Raptors. And I know a lot of you probably were thinking I'd have the Raptors a lot higher, but I'm going to be fair here. The Eastern Conference did get a lot better. This is a very deep conference with the addition, of course, of the Brooklyn Nets and some of these other teams that took a leap forward last season. The Raptors, though, will still be a middle-of-the-pack team. This is a team that they didn't downgrade, but they didn't necessarily get better. They will still remain competitive this season while their sights are, of course, on next NBA offseason. And this is a team that will still fight hard in every single game. And this is a team that will be in every single game. And uh, this is a team that you will not be able to sleep on come playoff time. But when it's all said and done, I think the Raptors will have themselves a roller coaster of a season. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs, but they will still come out of it a fifth seed. Number four, the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat will have themselves a better regular season than they did a year ago, and they will be in the top four. This is a team that's basically bringing the exact same team back from that NBA Finals run. Jimmy Butler's hungrier. He wants to get back. I think this Heat team is going to have themselves a nice season. Number three, I got the Boston Celtics. I think the Celtics are going to continue to progress. Jason Tatum in another year of his campaign. Some of you probably know that I'm super high on this guy. He's a superstar to me. They did add Tristan Thompson while they did lose Gordon Hayward. I don't think the Gordon Hayward loss is going to be that big of a loss to the Celtics. The Celtics, they're going to be a top three team. This team is going to have themselves a very good regular season. And this is going to be a team that you got to consider when talking about, um, you know, one of the teams that can come out of the East and make it to an NBA Finals. They were so close last year. And I think that experience, that added experience will only benefit them going into this season. Number two, maybe a little bit of surprise here. I got the Milwaukee Bucks. Yes, the Milwaukee Bucks will not once again finish number one. They did go out and get Drew Holiday, big addition, but I think they did mess up by not getting and and finalizing that Bogdanovich deal. That, of course, came crashing and burning. That could have been the piece that could have brought the Bucs all the way into an NBA Finals appearance. But nonetheless, the Bucs, they are still a superior regular season team. They will come to play here. Giannis is going to have himself another MVP type season. Who knows? He might even be able to win himself another one because Giannis is quickly becoming one of the best regular season players in basketball. It doesn't matter where the Bucks finish, it's how they fare in the playoffs. And the problem has been that they have continuously disappointed in the playoffs. So I know Bucks fans, they don't care about the regular season anymore. They feel like Raptors fans from a few seasons ago, it's all about the postseason. And it's all about how Giannis performs and those other guys perform in the postseason. So the Bucks, while not having a ton of attention and a ton of focus on the regular season, as in years past, they will slip a little bit here and finish second instead of that one seed that they've been so used to over the last few years. And then number one, if you haven't already figured it out, it's the Brooklyn Nets. And a lot of you might think and say, it's too early to crown Brooklyn as the number one seed in the East. I mean, there's a lot of question marks on this team. I get it. But I just have this feeling that Kevin Durant, he says he's ready. He's had a little bit of extra time to prepare. He is one of the best players in all of basketball when he is on his game. I have this feeling that that Durant's going to come back and he is going to cause mayhem on the entire Eastern Conference. We're going to see an MVP, Kevin Durant, this season. He wants to prove that he can do it on his own, although he obviously has a sidekick in Kyrie Irving. And speaking about him... I think Kyrie Irving's going to have himself a nice season here. He's already said that he's not going to be entertaining or, or you know, getting involved with the media. He's going to be a focused Kyrie, and we know Kyrie Irving does well when there's a better player on his team. We saw how well he flourished with a LeBron James. I think Kyrie Irving's going to do the same types of things with Kevin Durant that he was able to accomplish with LeBron James. And the determining factor for me as to why I do have the Nets number one is because of their supporting cast. I saw what this team was capable when they played the Raptors in the first round. Karis LeVert, Joe Harris coming back, uh, Jared Allen. This Brooklyn Nets team has a lot of great depth. And now you're talking about adding two superstars 
Kevin Durant is undoubtedly a superstar when healthy, and then Kyrie Irving when healthy is a borderline superstar, that's going to make all the difference in the world. Of course, there's another big question mark at coaching, but I trust that Steve Nash will translate into a decent coach, and that will be good enough for the Brooklyn Nets to have themselves a very good campaign. And could they get out of the East and make it to the finals? Of course they can. This team, they have all the pieces, they have all the talent. It's going to be about if they can click and gel in their first season. If that happens, this is basically their conference to lose. And there you have it, my finalized standings in the West and East. Let me know what you think of these standings, guys. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, review this podcast anywhere you find your podcasts, and uh, we can keep the conversation rolling on social media. That's Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. That's it for me. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all again in the next episode of Raps Report. Until next time, be great and stay blessed. Peace. Bye.